Hey everybody, it's Levi Thames. About 12 hours ago, I received in the mail Mustafa Gadala's A61 or 2001-6 book, Egyptian Alphabetical Letters, which was the first book I found that semi-correctly decoded the letters of the alphabet back into Egyptian hieroglyphics. So we're going to give a little bit of overview of this in terms with the comparison to my drafting book, Alphanumerics, The Origin of the Alphabet. So this came in the mail 12 hours ago. <clears throat> I already tabbed it and read it. We'll go through all these, or some of them. And last week I ended up read, read this book from 2017 called Ancient Egypt Universal Writing Modes. And I thought in here that you would, I ended up buying the wrong book. I thought that this would explain that he says that there's 20 letters, A, B, G, D, that came from Egypt, but he doesn't explain any of this in this book. Mm -hmm wasn't very, it was basically a waste of time but I ended up finding the right book and I read that today so I've already decoded that the prior to read he decoded this from Arabic alphabet and the 1245 light in papyrus i350 which we'll talk about and he ended up at he ended up arriving at the this twenty eight letter basis for the alphabet. And the twenty eight again corresponds to the number of days of the lunar month. So I after I read this book, I thought he was just calling bunk, but that I didn't really understand how he got he arrived at twenty eight day alphabet cycle. So now I understand, but to give a background of how I decoded the alphabet over the pandemic, or over the two years of 2020-2021, when the pandemic first broke out, I started drafting human chemical thermodynamics. And I've already known for a long time, for at least 20 years when I first started investigating the origin of religions, that Kim is spelled, it comes from the Egyptian Kim, Kem, K-E-M-E, or in Hebrew it's called H-E-M, or pronounced Kem. And so I've known that for some time. But when the pandemic started, I, when I was doing the etymology of chemical thermodynamics, I began writing a chapter on that and learned that theta, the Greek, the ninth letter of the Greek alphabet, which is right here, corresponds or numerically equals both theta and helios. So that was a thumbs up for me. I, oh, now I understood why, for example, James Maxwell used theta as the symbol in thermodynamics for temperature and why it eventually became the word thermodynamics coined by William Thompson, a friend of Maxwell. So at this point, in the first months of the pandemic, I knew that thermodynamics was based on the Greek letter theta and that both theta and the Greek sun god Helios equaled numerically according to their letters 318, but I was, didn't I didn't know much beyond that. So over the next years, I ended up decoding the entire alphabet just based on that. And I'd, I've known I've always known that ant letter N equals 50, and it's the 14th letter, and that, that corresponds to 
the Egyptian flood god Nun and the Nile River. So I knew that. So getting back to Adala's book, which I just finished reading in the last 12 hours. We're going to focus on letter K instead of going through the whole, his whole, all of his chapters. Or, so, Kim equals 70. And that Kim is the black soil that the Nile flood waters bring down each year from the melting of the snow in the Ethiopian mountains, which comes down through the Blue River, the Blue Nile, and leaves fertile soil on the banks of the Nile, and that's where the plants come from. So K equals 20, E equals 5, M equals 40, and E equals 5, that equals, adds up to 70. And that's the number of days that Sirius disappears from the sky. So over here, K has a value of 20, it's 11th Greek letter, corresponds to the time. E corresponds to Sirius, the brightest star in the sky, which rises, or when it rises, after disappearing for 70 days, marks the start of the Nile flood. And M equals 40, that corresponds to the principle of Mott. So K plus M is 60, plus 2, 5 is equal 70. So the, the, all the chemistry, pretty much any dominant word in science, you can trace back to these numbers. So one thing we're going to talk about, which I learned today from reading Gadala's book, is that each of these letters which I already knew corresponded to different elements, or stokia, as Plato called them. For example, the four elements, earth, air, water, and fire. Fire is broken up into different letters. Correspond to different steps in the Egyptian cosmology or creation process. So... One thing I learned from Gadala today is that he says, for example, there's one thing I didn't know. Because I knew Thoth invented language, according to the god Thoth, is the inventor of the language of the Egyptians. But he supposedly he had a female counterpart called Ses Hat. And she, with her seven pointed star, was the inventor of numbers. So supposedly, according to Gadala's statements, which actually was already stated by somebody else in. 1995, or A40, is that Sasat corresponds to the number, for example, A equals 1, and Thoth corresponds to the letter. For, for example, A would be the Thoth variant of the letter, but the number 1 would be the Sasat variant of the number. And then, so anyways, he gets this all from, <clears throat> where he got this from is called the Light and Peppers J350. But if you're going to want to look it up, you're going to want to type in the I350, because I, J, and Y are all equivalent, depending on which alphabet you use. But that was published in 1251 BC or 3206A.
But this is what I didn't know. This is, this is real interesting. So the alphabet is based on what's called modulus nine. That is, there's 28 letters corresponding to 28 days of the lunar month, but they're divided into three groups of nine. And each group corresponds, nine is the nine years, what I didn't know, is that corresponds to the number of months of gestation of a human. So the first phase of letters goes one through A through uh, A through theta, which equals nine, and then you get I or Y through 90, or in Greek, this is the first group that corresponds to the first gestation period, or nine lunar, nine, nine lunar months, or nine corresponding time a human is in the womb, and then 10 through 90 corresponds to the next group, and then 100 through 900 corresponds to the next group. So the whole alphabet is divided into three groups, each one corresponding to a gestation period. So I never made the connection that nine corresponds to, or the enad corresponds to the gestation period of a human in the female womb. So, So this is what, so here so we have the three gestation periods. Now this is what Gadala's argument is. He says that the, the letter N corresponding to the, it's always, N has always been the center of the alphabet. There's three nines, there are three, there's nine, single digit values, one, two, three, four, through, and there's nine 10 digit values, nine, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, and there's nine 100 digit values. So R or rho equals 100, sigma equals 200, 300, 400, 500, 600, 700, 800, 900, and then we go back into 1,000, which equals the monad. Now this is the Greek version of it. We also have the Hebrew version of the, the same alphabet. And again, normally Hebrew alphabet is written as 22 letters. But if you break it apart into its standard and final version of these four letters, it stretches out into 28 letters, which is again the number of days of lunar month. And so he, Gadala, bases his derivation on the uh, Leiden papyrus here. And that was written in Greek. It's called the Hymn to Amen in 1245 BC or 3200A. Now one thing that I decoded already that is that the Greek rho, which, which became, which originally was a three spiral letter like this, and it was value 100 on tomb UJ, which is the Scorpion King's tomb. And that's already dated minus 3145 or 3145 BC or 5100 A in elementum years. So, one thing we'll note here is that this, this, and so Gadala bases all of his derivation on the Arabic letters. So the Jewish letters or Hebrew letters stop at letter 22 at four, or letter value 400, but the Arabic values, the Arabic the abjads continue 500 through 1,000. And this was invented, or this 
was adopted after the Arabs invented Egypt or took over Egypt in 655 or 1300 A. So the important point to note here is that the this was published by the in the tomb of one of the sons or grandsons of Hatkanaten who who attempted to try or this was published in the tomb of one of the grandsons of Hatkanaten who attempted to reform Egypt into monotheism but it didn't work out so shortly after this we also have the Phoenician alphabet which is in between here but the letter R was switched somewhere in this period between the Leiden papyrus, the Phoenician alphabet, and the Hebrew alphabet into a value of 200. In this way, it displaced R as the letter of Ra. It threw out the, the polytheism and, re, and instituted a monotheism by way of a mathematical cipher. So we were just going to go through... We're going to go through the letter K. So K is the 11th letter, and it corresponds to, we'll recognize it from words such as the Greek word chronos, which is the god of time, or clock. That's where clock, the word clock comes from. So I already decoded this, and it turns out that Kadala, if we go to K, and he's using the Arabic alphabet. He says that the letter K corresponds to the heavenly constituents which move in orderly manner and designated their courses and times. So he read a it's either an English translation or a German or Dutch or French translation of this lightest papyrus I-350. So we'll look at that and explain how where the letter K came from. Um, but before we get into that, so this is just your basic, this is your original version of the Egyptian numbers. So, one just is just a finger. Ten corresponds to this U thing. They label it as heel, but correctly, this is the yoke of a cow. And the sun was supposedly born out of the cow Hather. And the sun, is, the number ten, corresponds to Horus when he's born out of the uterus of Hather. So ten corresponds to the cow's yoke. Hundred corresponds to our little, the three ringed coil. It's not a coil of rope, but it actually corresponds to the one, two, three phases of the cycle, or the creation cycle. So here's creation cycle one, one through nine, creation cycle two, ten through ninety, creation cycle three, coil number, coil number three is hundred through nine hundred. So it's kind of like the spiral, the spiral three, three generations of the sun. And then lastly, number 1,000 corresponds to the sun being born out of a lotus. So if you look at New Egyptian mythology, you see that Horus is typically the newborn sun who is born out of the rising lotus that rises out of the Nile and the sun is reborn. And as we'll show that numbers of 1, 10, 100, and 1,000 are all equivalent to the monad and that they reduce according to the the scheme that's invented here with the uh, the three tier or modulus nine system of the Egyptian alphabet. So the way this works here, or just to point out here that Gaddafis pointed out something to me which I didn't really sketch before. So he says that nine is the central 
letter. And these letters all here corresponds to the mental phase of creation or, it's, or the noose phase, the, which corresponds to things happening in the stars. And this is the, re, the letters 15 through 27 corresponds to things physically happening on, on the earth. And these are mirror, these are mirror, mirrored to each other letters. The same way that these letters start starting from the left, Aleph, Gimel, Beth. This way corresponds to the celestial or mental phase of letters, and this corresponds to the physical phase of letters. So the way this works is that this is the Nile flood. And when the Nile reaches its height during the flood season, the sun reaches its strongest power between August and September. And then it just starts decreasing in power, it reverses its cycle before it's reborn and born out of, there's, there's the Hathor's, the Hathor symbol right there. Remember the symbol 10 corresponds to this U shape that Horus is born, Horus corresponds to Iota as does Jesus or Yahweh. So Hathor is born out of the cow, and then Sampi corresponds to the number 27 or the two-way God, and you go back into the monad. So this is the way it works here, according to the actual weather patterns in Egypt. So on June 24th, Sirius rises or goes through its helical rising. And again, after it's been disappeared for 70 days, which was we just showed is where the letter Kim comes from. So then the, that starts the Nile flood, which goes for 50 days in, in its rising, climbs upwards of 30 feet. And this rising of water comes from snow melting in the Ethiopian mountains. And again, the N is 50, so that's where that 50 comes from. And then the water decreases over 100 days. That's where the letter R, value 100, comes from. But the point here is that Gadala pointed out to me that so the letter N here would correspond this corresponds to the temperature, the actual temperature according to data in, in Cairo. So the hottest days of the year correspond to the peak of the Nile flood, which occur between September and October or August. So this corresponds to the growth of the sun or the forward process of the letters of the alphabet or corresponds to this phase of the letters of the alphabet. And then number 15 corresponds to the reverse of it. From the peak when the sun is here and getting colder and eventually getting reborn in December 25th. So we see that K has already been decoded as having to do with the clock and time. So if we go to the, here's stanza 20 from the Light and Papyrus. This is the hieroglyph to English sort of, uh, I don't know what you call this. And this is the French version of the whole thing for letter 20. Or for your kappa value 20. So we've already decoded, there's already been decoded from Greek that uh, this has to do with the clock for a number of different astronomical re reasons. But so I've already decoded this, uh, translated this, this French right here. And the 
there's the French, and then I cut and pasted that. Then we go to Google Translate, and I was here that uh, Horace, filling your office for each day, who makes the years, organizes the months, the days, the nights, and the hours. So what Gaddafi already matched up with K, already matched up what I already did with Greek with K. So in other words, the letter K was this entire paragraph that had to do with timekeeping and all this, all this stuff right here, this whole paragraph that had to do with the letter K about timekeeping and the sled, how Horus, which corresponds to the North or the North Pole, the pole of the Earth versus the pole of the, the North Pole versus the Earth's pole differ. And that's where this timekeeping stuff comes from. So this whole paragraph got truncated over the years into the letter K or Kappa, Kappa in Hebrew with a value of 20 which comes before new it's a value of 50 or in Hebrew corresponds to calf value 20 in other words the word clock comes from this clock and or in it's the same thing in the Islamic calendar 20 corresponds to calf so that letter K that whole paragraph got truncated down in this one letter it became symbolic of the everything that was described so if you go to the Hebrew version of this whole thing, I mean, not the Hebrew version, but these, here's the, here's the Dutch version of this paper. It's called the hymn, hymn to Amman. And Amman equals 900. Or Amman is, the number of Amman is 99. It's kind of like a, the God who is reincarnates through 10, 100, and 1,000. But if we just look at, I haven't been able to get a copy of this book, but because I just found it today and it's $100 English. But so this is what they look like the original papyrus. Supposedly, this was a papyrus on a ship for keeping track of logs, people who left the ship and came to the ship and the amount of food aiding, but there's this 30. So I don't know where the numbers breaks in this thing because I haven't been able to find the English to hieroglyph translation, but supposedly K, let's say K went from 15 to 21. So it'd be this whole story about timekeeping in the, in the stars truncated into one letter. So all of this, 15 through say 21, if that was K, this whole story was truncated into one letter. And so that's where the K count, and that's how it worked with all the letters, the alphabet. Now, just to show you that this isn't So here we see stanza 10, and we go up through here, stanza 60. So stanza 60 would correspond to letter Xi in Greek, and it would have to do with something about the stability of the, that's the Dejide pillar. This is the Dejide pillar, and this would correspond to the stability of the heavens. But here we see the numbers coming up are 70, and it goes to 80, 100. Now, supposedly this is the letter, the number of R, but I haven't looked through the translation. Uh, Kafa, Godala here says that it's actually number 200 corresponds to the letter R, but I'm going to have to uh, look through the whole translation before I can find this. 
So here we see here we see he's talking about there's R there. There's the god Re there, Heliopolis. And we see the god Amon Amon there, which is 99. So if this is stanza 200, and this is corresponding to R, this could be, could be where monotheism was began to be switched around after the debacle of Atkanatan. But getting back to the alphabet, we see stanza 300, stanza 400, and this, all, this goes all the way up to 600, 700. So 700 corresponds to Psi in the Greek alphabet which is the symbol of the mind. So supposedly if we translate this, we'll get there's Thebes, Re, Atom, Butch. We might get something similar to that because the Greeks all learned, traveled to Egypt to learn these systems. But the point here is that in conclusion, so the this manuscript stops at 800, doesn't have, it's missing 900 and 1,000. It's also missing the first five letters. So I'm going to stop. Gadala doesn't really get, get those. But if you go, if we go here to the first part of the whole thing, we see there the the manuscript has all these numbers, so each one of these corresponds to a letter. So 5 corresponds to E. But it's missing the first four letters. For some reason, it's missing the last two letters, but which corresponds to 20, the 20. So there, originally there's 28 of these, and each of these corresponds to part of the moon and anyways these stanzas are called man these each one of these is called a mansion of the lunar mansions in the translation so anyways that's where letters come from and that's about it for right now